Howdy folks, today I'm taking a Remington 673 out for a spin on the range and uh, those of you that have been watching my videos for a while know that I'm not a Remington fan but this is an interesting rifle, this is essentially a, a Remington Model 7 short action uh, it's the, well they're all short action, so there's only one size of Remington Model 7 action but I've never run a, a Model 7 Remington so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a try the 673 and 308 you don't see too many of them around. Only manufactured between 2003 and 2004. There weren't a heck of a lot of these things made. And uh, some people love them. Some people hate them. I want to find out for myself, so stay tuned if you want to know more. Cheers. Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of the Rifle Chair Adventure Channel. I keep catching myself. I keep calling it the Rifle Chair YouTube channel, but it's not really that anymore. Yeah, things move on. So anyway, um, I, I took a rifle out for a test drive today. It's the Remington Model 673, as you see on my shoulder here. And uh, essentially what this is, is uh, a Remington Model 7. And it takes after you know, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a kind of a recomposition of the Remington Model 600 from the mid 1960s, and they were chambered in uh, this one here is chambered in 308. Uh, but there's a bunch of other models out there. Well, they're all the 673s, but there's some different variations of this rifle, uh, the, of the 673 chambered in 300 short mag. Now this is. Uh, 300 short action ultra magnum. This is the Remington's version of the Winchester Winchester short magnum, but essentially it's the 300 SOM short action ultra magnum, the 6.5 Remington magnum, and the 350 Remington magnum. So, and the 308 as we have here. They're cha they have those four chamberings for this rifle, and the concept of this rifle is to provide a, a fast relatively lightweight guide gun. It's called the guide gun. And uh, that kind of thing interests me because I do a lot of uh, uh, wilderness carry kind of work out in the bush. It's because of my occupation. And uh, so a rifle like this kind of interests me. So I want to I want to find out what they had in mind when they when they put this rifle together. This little Remington 673. Now the six the Remington 673, the 6 represents its lineage going back to the Remington Model 600. The 7 is basically because it's a Remington Model 7 action. Um, and what does a 3 stand for? I can't remember. I'll, I'll annotate it in down below. Probably the year of manufacture, actually. Because these, these things came out in uh, 2003, and they stopped production in 2004. So, very limited run of these of these little rifles here. Now, some, some details on this thing. Um, it is, the stock is very, very, well, it's very similar to the original model, with the Model 600, with the laminated stock, as you see here. Now, there's tons of information on this rifle out on the uh, on the World Wide Web. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on the um, on the rifle itself, why they did things a certain way, but I am going to tell you about the way I think it performs, and um, I think that you'll probably find more interest in that. I took it out. We did we bang, banged away. Just did some uh, some preliminary testing, uh, just to see what what I can basically expect out of this rifle. I did not put an optic on this rifle. I did not. I want to find out what what these sights are all about. Um, essentially, what we have here is a rear sight that you can um, that is uh, you can adjust for elevation and for windage, and the front post is fixed. Huge blade, huge proud blade on this thing, and it's very very wide. You'll also you may or may not be able to see, but there is a uh, the front sight has a white dot on it. <clears throat> I'm not terribly fond of sights that have the front post um, brightened. Okay, I, I like having a front post that I can see a good silhouette. 
Um, not so with this rifle, and it's really apparent when you're out in in daylight conditions shooting this thing. Um, that front post is very, 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 very broad. I'd say probably similar in nature to an SKS front sight. Very, very broad, but that big patch of paint, big square of paint on the front sight, really does, for me, make it difficult to get a decent sight picture. I know that it makes sense possibly if you are in a low light condition, especially if you have light coming from the rear um, towards your front, but if you're actually looking into uh, the sun, I find that uh, having a, a bright front post detracts from your sight picture, from a quality sight picture. So we took it out, we'll roll some footage of the rifle shooting, and uh, we'll give you a debrief at the end of it. For, for fairly close range shooting, probably out to two, maybe 300 meters, you'll get relatively decent accuracy. We're just doing some test runs today with this rifle to see what it's going to do. This is me at uh, 100 meters, prone and unsupported. Nothing terribly fancy here. That's about a, probably around four inches that way and two inches, uh, maybe an inch and a half the other way. That's open sights. Damn, I didn't bring the patches with me. Well, let's shoot at the next target. So anyways, uh, I think that's a reasonable expectation for accuracy out of this rifle. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that for a rifle with open sights. Obviously, I need to make a sight correction. Uh, mean point of impact is approximately four inches to the right. So now you get a bit of an idea as to what kind of a performance you can expect out of these rifles with the sights, the way they are uh, configured. Now, I... This rifle, this, this rifle is in 308. It does have a 20 inch barrel, actually from the, from the face of the bolt face all the way up to the uh, muzzle, it is around 22 inches. So, but I figure the rifling probably starts, you got about 20 inches of rifling in, on this barrel. Now, very interesting, uh, as you know, is we have this steel rib going along the top of the, of the rifle. Now, many, I've heard, I've been reading the websites and I've been studying the, the information that's out there and there's not really a lot of information. Now there are two 
considerations when you have a barrel with something fixed onto it as you see here. The original Model 600 had a plastic rib. People didn't like that. This one is made of steel. Now there are a couple of different ways of looking at it. Um, this rifle is not free floated by the way. You cannot get anything underneath the, uh, the barrel here in between the, um, the front ferrule uh, moving backwards. It is making firm contact pretty much all the way along here. Um, and so that's that's interesting that they did it that way. Also with the uh, with steel rib here. So I'm kind of wondering what that does to the barrel harmonics for a rifle like this, because most most barrels will have if they're free float. I mean, barrels are kind of like a tuning fork. You want them to you want them to sing a little bit, kind of like ting. I mean, this is a barrel harmonics. Um, what does a rib like this do to <clears throat> do to its performance? Does it make it more accurate? or does it detract from performance? Now my, my test here today didn't really wasn't really about accuracy. I did my best but I'm, I'm shooting open sights and the sight radius on here is probably in the neighborhood of 17-18 inches. Now, there's only so much you can do with a sight radius like that um, and to be honest with you I can shoot you know a 60-year-old uh, Lee Enfield better than I can this with, with the sights that are, uh, that are on here. Um, because the sight radius is so long on a number four Mark One Lee Enfield, compared to this, so and plus with the with the front post being so broad, so wide, um, that may be good in in fairly low light conditions. But on on average, for your typical kind of daylight shooting conditions, it doesn't really provide you with any bonus, in my opinion. The uh, so what we what we ended up with out there was uh, four inch to five inch groups, and I put three different lots of, of ammunition through it. Um, some some federal 180 grain Spitzer points, some 165 grain federal, and uh, some 143 grain Chinese surplus 76 tornado. Now, what I can tell you about this particular rifle is that is that the, the chamber is very tight. Like when you when you when you close that bolt on a round, you can feel it binding, right? It is very tight, so it's a press fit for pretty much all of the ammunition I ran through this rifle. The Chinese surplus ammunition that was steel cased definitely was, oh, you had to basically cam it down in order to, to, uh, to engage the locking lugs. Now, I start walking into a, uh, into, a, uh, into a situation at that point where I feel a little bit uncomfortable about pulling the trigger. It's a, it is a very tight chamber and, uh, and surplus ammunition may or may not work for you in this rifle. Okay, because the the tight tolerances on that chamber. However, um, uh, today I did actually pop a primer, and uh, it was not it was on a different load for for a different rifle. I shouldn't have run it through this through this rifle, but I did. It was fairly low pressure round. I don't know why this one didn't like it. The other rifles I've run run that ammunition lot through, it's worked out fine. I mean, this these are full length sized uh, reloads. This rifle didn't like it. It shot fairly well, but I mean, you know, you don't want to be popping primers. So stopped uh, shooting it at that point in time. I'll roll some footage in. It upset me quite a bit that, that this happened. So finicky when it comes to the ammunition that that uh, you're going to be able to run through that. Now with a guide rifle, the premise is you're going to be out in, uh, in less than perfect environmentals. You're going to have rain in the action. You might be out in the snow. Uh, there may be things that are um, in the chamber with your ammunition when you need to pull the pull, pull round off. And <clears throat> for a rifle like that, you want to have relatively loose tolerances because of things like that. With guide rifle, you've got to have 100% reliability. That's kind of the way I look at it. So, wasn't happy about that. Um, Accuracy-wise, we were in the 5-inch 
range, four inch to four inch to five inch range, didn't really matter what ammunition I put through it or in the shooting position that I was that I w was using. So I uh, I tried some accuracy work off bags. I tried some accuracy work uh, prone and supported. And I was always getting the same results, regardless of, this, of the lot of ammunition I put through it, four, four to five inches. So I'm leaning towards, um, when it comes to the pros or the cons, of having a metal rib along the barrel, like you see here, uh, that is just screwing with the barrel harmonics too much. I thought it might actually um, help, to, help to reduce any kind of issues with barrel whip, and that there might be a compromise with the barrel harmonics and barrel whip because this is adding strength to 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 the uh, barrel, but I but I believe the barrel harmonics win the day when it comes to um, the accuracy department. These are this is not, in my opinion, this this is not a terribly accurate rifle, probably because of this phenomenon. Even though it's got a nice tight chamber, I believe this rib is detracting from accuracy. However, the, the proof is in the pudding. Can it run fast? So. I'll roll in some footage right now of me running this rifle as safely, as quickly as I can with the worst quality ammunition I think you'll, you'll be able to, to, to find on the market. Remember, laboratory conditions is what I was shooting this in today and um, um, have a look You tell me whether you think this is fast enough. So let's talk about the sights a little bit. Can I get a decent sight picture? Oh yes, absolutely. Right? If you've got a dark foreground, that white front blade stands out quite nice. There's a, uh, there's a pyramid triangle on the rear sight, kind of pointing towards where the center of the, of the, of the notch is. Um, I don't mind that so much. It's kind of traditional Remington. Um, but what I will say is, the sights are very similar to so this rib kind of reminds me of a shotgun and if you're if you're an over under shotgunner or uh, if you're really into trap shooting and stuff like that you may actually really like the sight sighting system um, it isn't quite as high on the rifle as i probably would have liked it to be i'm still making some pretty firm contact here with my cheekbone along this uh, this profile of stock more of a maybe a kind of a european uh rounded stock me have been a little bit more appropriate for these for this for these sights they aren't that high on the rifle they're not um, also the the rear sight one feature on here that I really think is a terrible idea is um, uh, the fact that it is entirely supported by a tiny little set screw and uh, that is not strong I mean if you're gonna if this is a guide gun you might be out with a 350 Remington Magnum you know, and uh, out in the bush knocking around uh, looking for that grizzly bear or whatever it is that you're hunting for or moose. You hit that thing hard, it's going to break. I there's no doubt in my mind. Plus, once you actually get your zero established, you're going to want to Loctite that set screw. It is, uh, it's pretty loose. You know, where I have it now, I've pretty much got it zeroed for 100 meters, but normally I would have this thing zeroed at 200 meters, which means it would be fairly proud. And uh, because there's actually a space underneath here, you could get things uh, snagged in there. And, and uh, so I don't like that. I don't like that at all, but um, it is what it is. Uh, so I think that there's uh, definitely some, some thought went into it, but um, in my opinion, so far as being field savvy, not for me. The recoil pad, it's not a recoil pad. It's not a recoil pad, okay? That's that's hard. It's like a hockey puck. It'll stop your rifle from slipping out if you uh, if you lean it up against the wall, say on a hardwood floor, it'll stop it from slipping out underneath like a piece of plastic. So that's what it's for. I have to admit that if I was running a 350 Remington Mag chambered, this rifle chambered, 
uh, having a nice uh, Pacamar decelerator on there might be of big benefit, um, but uh, that's how they came. Uh, scope mounting options for the Remington uh, 673 fairly limited because the because uh, the contour of the rib on the top so you're probably looking at a maximum 33 inch uh, uh, objective type of scope on this thing and plus because you've got the 90 degree bolt left on the Remington um, you're uh, you're fairly limited as for the uh, the the not the objective but the eyepiece here it can't be too big in diameter especially if you're trying to look, mount your, your scope nice and low on the rifle. Uh, the safety is very positive, um, no problems there. It's got the J-lock, the Remington J-lock built into the uh, bolt shroud. Another thing that I hate, I suspect that that has an impact on the trigger, I'm not sure, because the trigger is, uh, it's not, we're probably in the neighborhood of around four and a half to five pounds brake, brake strength. Anyway, uh, for this, uh, I think if you're gonna run optics on, um, on this rifle, You'd probably be in the, in the neighborhood of a one to four by twenty, just so you can low, you can mount the rifle nice and low on the on the stock. Okay, uh, the uh, the trigger guard assembly. It's got the old school Remington trigger with uh, which is uh, it's um, not ventilated. What do you call that? Anyway, it's it's not a smooth surface, so it, it does actually have a bit of a bit of grip there for your finger, if you're in wet conditions. I'm not too terribly fond of the uh, of the magwell release, where it uh, I, I don't like the um, the rear uh, action screw behind the trigger guard. It's very small. Run some footage in of that, and uh, I'd say overall that. Um, I'm, I'm not terribly fond of this rifle, so that's my opinion, and uh, you can take that for what it's worth. I know there's going to be a bunch of Remington um, fans out there that, that, that disagree, and that's 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 one that's 100 fine. Um, just been in my experience, this is not really the kind of rifle I'd be carrying in the bush. I'd be carrying something different. I mean, there it's what it's been branded and marketed to do. Maybe it's maybe there's no surprise that it was only manufactured and marketed for one year, one and a half, two years something to that effect it just simply was not that popular with a lot of people I think probably just the uh, the the uh, the aesthetics of the rifle didn't appeal to too many people with this vent along the uh, the top of the this vented rib across the uh, top of the rifle I don't think it's a terribly accurate rifle I don't think it's a terribly lightweight rifle um, I, I actually do like the quality of the check ring on this laminated stock I think the stock itself is quite attractive I do. Um, I like the, the, I mean, the check ring design. I like it. I think it's fairly attractive stock, to be honest with you. But I use it for a hunting rifle. You know what? I, I, if I, if I had to, yeah, I absolutely would. You know, there are so few rifles out there that have a decent sighting system. This, um, this isn't bad. I mean, it. I, I don't like how it's kind of hanging here, the rear sight. I think that you could actually snap that off and damage it if it knocked, if it got hit. Um, the front blade is, uh, it's, I mean, just look at that. Look at the size of that. <laughs> it's got, I don't know if that's gonna catch the wind or what. Get some sail action going on. But, uh, you know, it's not a lightweight rifle. And, tr and truth matter is, if you're gonna be running a 350 Remington Magnum out of this, you don't want a lightweight rifle. But what I, what I use it for day-to-day -day carry, I'm afraid not. But I'll show you what I would. I would be, you know, if you're gonna be talking about a guide rifle or something to that effect, um, you might wanna consider something like this. Now this is lightweight and it'll pack a punch too for, for personal trail, trail defense. It's just so handy, this little Model, model 92 and, and 44 Magnum. Right, you can run it fast. Right? way faster than that Remington Model 7 or which is my uh, my regular go-to rifle which is the Marlin 1895 I mean just, these, these are just fantastic rifles for for the bush I mean it's so much faster and and with 4570 400 grain uh, hard cast bullet that grizzly bear it's it's got the knockdown power you need 
That's a couple of uh, concepts for you folks. Um, again, with uh, with the, with the Marlin, you can mount probably the same type of optic you can mount on the uh, on the 673, and uh, that would be fine. So there's my uh, there's my assessment of the uh, of the Remington guide gun, the model 673. Hope that uh, helps you in making it a, uh, an educated decision whether something like this might be for you. Um, that's all I got for you. Hope you're all doing well. Cheers, and as always, Maple Leaf up.